welcome to my most favorite time of the day. It's uh, about eight, almost 8.30 and I love this time of day. The sun's going down, it's getting cooler. I like nighttime. I am standing out in our no-till cornfield. So you can see the corn here that Moxie's walking in between, but you can also see the old hay that was here and quite a bit of kosher wheat, which aren't our favorite, but as long as they don't outcompete the corn, it's not the worst thing in the world. Stan has an interseeder from the NRCS, and uh, he's just interseeding some more cover crops and stuff into the corn. So as the corn gets up and then we harvest it, there'll be something else growing for us to either graze or harvest or however that works. Um, we're really grateful for the NRCS, National Resource Conservatory. Grateful to be able to work with them and the different opportunities that they provide and equipment. Uh, it's pretty fun. And this uh, interseeder, is like our corn row, our corn planter, where there's six, uh, six planter rows. And this is the same at six, but instead it has a gap that runs right over the corn so we can plant in between the corn with, uh, with much more precision than if we didn't. Of course, there's still some corn casualties here. And some of those might actually pop back up because the corn is still fairly young but we'll we'll lose some of it but it's not really a loss because it's just going to be going back into the earth and feeding the soil and that's the cool thing with all this is even if stuff doesn't go the way we want it's always a win for the soil health because we're always trying to give back to the earth so uh, I mentioned that this field is a no-till field and usually when something is no-till that usually means it's not organic but when someone says something is organic it usually means that they use um, medium to heavy tillage I guess it just kind of depends and that's a it's a hard balance to find because you know, Stan and I, we don't like pesticides, and many of you don't like pesticides. Um, but in order to be no-till, until there's something really fancy that we find that... Which we, we've seen some different options. Um, we have to use, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, pesticides in order to get these no-till cornfields or stuff like that. Um, but it's not like we go crazy. We do just enough to do what we need and only what we need, not to have the prettiest clean field. And as you can see, there's corn, but there's also a lot of other weeds and that's fine. That's the cool thing about doing more of the, the beef is we won't have to worry about this so much because uh, everything will be pasture and be much more holistic. Pesticides, of course, is toxins, it's poison and it kills insects and a lot of other things, but tillage uh, kills the soil life, which is as important as um, beneficial insects. There's actually studies or things that have been done where there was actually healthier soil and life with no-till than there is with organic. Uh, a quote that's often, or not a quote, a saying that's often used is, uh, tilled itself into uh, into destruction, you know, with the deserts and the loss of their agriculture, and they were or organic. You know, a lot of people have destroyed their land through organic practices. I'm not to say organic is bad. I really love organic and that's something we want to work towards, but there's something to say about also not tilling the soil. There's a, there's a lot of ideas and research and a lot of different things that can be done with our organic and no-till. And we really hope one day to get to the point where we're using no pesticides and no chemicals. Um, but for now, it's just uh, one step at a time. And uh, we used to, ha we have this shed that Stan built 
and uh, it's not my shed, Stan built it. It was when him and my dad were uh, running, were doing the farm together, uh, which my dad still does stuff on the farm. Anyway, uh, that it used to be filled with chemicals because that's just what conventional farmers do is chemicals. And now there's hardly any in there just for really rare times for certain things. Um, I mean, if we had all the money in the world, we would be able to experiment more with different uh, machineries and stuff. Like there's one thing Stan saw that's uh, kind of like a humidifier that runs low to the ground and you do it at certain times of the year and the heat kills the weeds that, uh, that come up before your crop like alfalfa or corn, uh, which is really cool. But again, it's the, the money that uh, goes into it. On our farm though, even if we got to a point where we were never using chemicals, we will never certify ourselves as organic or you know have that certification for a couple of reasons uh and i think i've might have talked about this i don't remember uh one we just don't want to pay money for a piece of paper that we can then say that we're organic because organic doesn't always mean that people are doing healthy practices um if there's a small town or a small uh company organic producer they probably do great things. But when you get commercial companies doing organic, they are not doing it for your best interest or the interest of the planet. They are still damaging the soil. And people who are trying to give back, that's what's more important to me. And two, so many people around us. So right now, uh, on the left here is uh, one of our fields. And then pretty much everywhere else, except where I filled it there, is someone else's field and all of them spray. I am pretty sure they all these fields have been sprayed at one point this year and you get that drift. And so uh, we'll, we'll probably never have the a low enough chemical levels, even if we're not spraying to be able to get certified as organic. And that's just something that that's really not our focus. Our focus on is on doing things that's going to heal the soil and heal our farm over getting certified labels of organic or grass fed or or whatever else is out there. I'm talking about the drift that happens with chemicals at David and I's house our, I assume it's our neighbor. We, I've seen them spray chemicals quite a few times. You can smell it. I hate the smell of chemicals. It smells like death pretty much. And you can see where it's drifted onto our property. There is a very distinct line of where our weeds pretty much are dead and what's still alive. And that's really, it really frustrates me that I'm trying to create this chemical free household and my neighbor's poor decision, I will say, is affecting my, my house. Um, what if it drifted over into my garden and killed my plants, even though my goats did a great job doing that all by themselves. Um, you know, it's these things that I don't think people think about because chemicals are so common now and it shouldn't be. It's yeah, chemicals are a disappointment. Do I feel like they have a place? Yes, because I feel like there's an exception to pretty much every rule, but I feel like 98% of the time they're not needed or wanted. So the interseeder that I showed you the other day or that video, anyway. So this is what was planned with that interseeder. This is pretty cool. Uh, richly a lentils. Uh, Austrian winter peas, cow peas, buckwheat, common bench, vetch, annual ryegrass, sunflower, collard greens, radish, turnip, balanza clover, and valicia. I don't know what that is, but look at this seat. It is beautiful. Look how pretty this is. That is beautiful. I can tell what some of this is, like, it's a turnip, pea, 
sunflower. This is what regenerative agriculture is all about. Getting away from monocultures and planting more varieties to get back to the soil. It's better for the animals and it's better for the wildlife around here on the farm. And it's, uh, it's really pretty when you see it coming up. It's more natural looking. Kind of when you're up, if you're up in the mountains or something and you look over a field, you don't just see one plant. You see a lot of plants, you know, intermixed all together, working together to create this nice, healthy soil ecosystem. Uh, I guess above and below the soil is a good ecosystem and it's pretty cool. When we'd plant, we used to just throw one type of seed in the planter and call it good, just alfalfa or just corn or whatever. And now you'll usually find at least three or four different type of seeds in the planter. This one, there was like what, nine or 10 and uh, that's the step in the right direction that I hope all farmers take. And with your support and and you asking farmers to do this, we'll be able to get there to a better, happier, healthier, more caring future. NRC? NRCS? Yeah. NRCS, Natural Resource Conservancy.